Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Nat Me, and today we're discussing the Terrigo Palatine Fossa. Uh, this is a very, very tiny fossa that is located at the back of the maxilla. Now, it, it does get a little tricky at times, but here I am on this channel to make anatomy simple for you. So, guys, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Let's get started with the Terrigo Palatine Fossa. So the first thing I want to show you is this image so you get an idea of what is exactly happening. But let me give you an orientation. So let's suppose there's the side of the skull. There's a maxilla. We all know that, right? And then uh, this is like the, the normal lateralis area. You know, from on top, this was the sphenoid bone. Uh, more specifically, this is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. Now, I want you to remember that the uh, sphenoid bone, uh, it gives a process below that projects below. This is known as the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. And I want you to remember if we go even deep inside, there is this palatine bone. Now, this is in this diagram, it looks like they're all equal, but the, this palatine bone is actually deep, all right? It's like the medial uh, wall of this fossa, all right? So the palatine bone all the way, you can see on top the palatine bone, this is the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. And inferiorly, this tiny process, this is the pyramidal process of the palatine bone. So now that you know all of these boundaries, the pterygopalatine fossa can become a piece of cake. Pterygopalatine fossa is basically this small pyramidal space, which is like uh, an inverted triangle or inverted pyramid, all right? It is located just directly below the apex of the orbit. So this is your orbit, right? And we know apex goes right here. So just below it, you'll see the space. It's pyramidal, its base is directed upwards, apex is downward, it's closed. Now I want, I'll go over the boundaries of this fossa and this time you'll help me too because now since you've seen the image let's go through this anteriorly lies what the maxilla the posterior surface of the maxilla is the anterior boundary of the pterygo palatine fossa lateral boundary is the pterygo maxillary fissure now you remember this was the pterygoid process coming from the sphenoid bone above above is the sphenoid bone uh, the posterior boundary will be formed by the root this is the root of the pterygoid process and obviously the sphenoid bone will also adjoin this part so these two are forming the posterior boundary greater wing of sphenoid and the root of pterygoid process medially is what do you think medially means inside now this is i'm going to draw it right here is the perpendicular plate of your palatine bone and a pyramidal process that is completing or closing the fossa inferiorly uh, by joining the maxilla and your ter pterygoid process. The pyramidal process is going to close the fossa inferiorly. Now I want you to remember a couple of foramens. Remember in the palatine bone, there is this foramen called the sphenopalatine foramen. In the posterior wall, so you'll find the rotundum canal. Then you'll find the pterygoid canal. And finally, you'll find the pharyngeal canal, all right? And in this pyramidal process that you see that closes the inferior angle, this pyramidal process of the palatine bone, you'll see the greater and the lesser palatine canals. And finally, the lateral boundary of the fossa is basically this pterygo maxillary fissure through which you enter into the fossa. I hope you can imagine the 3D shape that this fossa is being uh, creating. It's a very tiny fossa located at behind the uh, maxilla. The superior boundary is basically formed by the sphenoid bone. And right over here, there is this huge uh, opening called the inferior orbital fissure that is entering the orbit this is a communication with the orbit all right now you can easily go over the communications of the pterygopalatine fossa the first relation is anteriorly how is it anteriorly communicating it is communicating with the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure posteriorly its communication include this foramen rotundum through which it communicates with the middle cranial fossa because that's from where the middle cranial fossa foramen rotundum you know the maxillary nerve comes right and then we have the pterygoid canal which basically leads again to the middle cranial fossa the foramen lastrum and the pharyngeal canal leads to the pharynx medial communication includes through the sphenopalatine foramen it communicates with the nose lateral communication is through the pterygomaxillary fissure it enters what the infratemporal fossa obviously and finally inferiorly through the greater and lesser palatine canals it will communicate with the oral cavity their palate canals right that means the mouth lies here so obviously your oral cavity is communication so uh, let me go through the boundaries once again the anterior boundary maxilla's posterior surface Posterior boundary is the uh, some part of the greater wing of the sphenoid and the root of the pterygoid process. This consists of three canals. Uh, first is foramen rotundum, then is the pterygoid canal, then is palatovaginal canal. Then we have the superior. Superior part is formed by the undersurface of the body of the sphenoid bone. Right here, you'll also see an inferior orbital fissure being made to enter the orbit. 
and medial uh, boundaries formed by the palate palatine bone with a sphenopalatine foramen in it and inferiorly it's closed by the pyramidal process of the palatine bone through which there are two canals the greater and lesser palatine canals the laterally is the pterygomaxillary fissure so now when we talked about the communications through these canals and through these foramens it becomes super easy and i like to show you this image right here to clear your concept even more you can see from the superior area the inferior orbital fissure it's communic with the communicating with the orbit you can see this is the posterior wall. It has three uh, openings in it. First is foramen rotundum. This is a pterygoid canal. And then the pharyngeal canal, which is going to communicate with the nasopharynx. Inferior, you can see the palatine, two palatine canals. You can communicate with the oral cavity. And the pterygomaxillary fissure laterally, which is for the infratemporal fossa. And now we're going to talk about the contents of this fossa. Basically, this fossa contains your most important, the third part of the maxillary artery that we studied in the previous video. Definitely go ahead and watch that. The third part of the maxillary artery, you remember that it entered and it gave various, various branches. All those branches are going to be lying over here, right? Uh, for instance, the artery to the pterygoid canal will go through the pterygoid canal. Then there was this infraorbital artery, pharyngeal artery, greater palatine artery. All of the branches are going to exist here. Another important structure in this is because there's a maxillary artery, there has to be a maxillary nerve. Maxillary nerve is also content of this. And finally, and most important content is this circular structure right here called the pterygopalatine ganglion. And that is a topic for another video. So I really hope you understood today's video, the pterygopalatine fossa. In the next video, join me. I'll talk about the maxillary nerve and the pterygopalatine ganglion. Thank you so much for watching.